All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. James Gardner here from The Hero Within, and this is another Heroes on Vitality, an ongoing series here where I sit down with some amazing people, some some inspirational uh, peeps that are doing their part in this world that have uh, have championed their own journey to then be of service to others. And uh, my guest today uh, is is going to uh, share with me her journey, her individualized and, and personal journey uh, to to understanding and living with MS, with living with multiple sclerosis. And as we see, uh, as we will see, one key to to her journey was understanding that MS is is uh, also about mindset and and how mindset can enhance one's life with multiple sclerosis. All right, it is an honor to uh, to share some conversation today with my guest. Please welcome Patty Bevilacqua. Hello, hey everybody. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you today? I am very well, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, a chilly day in Grand Forks, but the leaves and the colors of the leaves warm my heart. So oh, I'm really happy. I love this time of year. It's beautiful. Uh, Patty, you are you are a true champion of MS, and we're going to talk about your journey in a moment. And uh, you know, you, you you do a lot of work now in terms of support and guidance for other women that are are dealing with this condition, and creating awareness uh, all throughout Canada in terms of public of of uh, MS and and uh, what it is, uh, how we live with it, how it doesn't define us. Uh, so, Patty, let's start. What what is MS, multiple sclerosis, what exactly is that condition? That's, that's a great question. And when I talk, when I want to share something with someone who is not familiar with it, I will uh, explain that the brain has, or for example, my arm will, I want my arm to move. And so that starts in my brain and it travels down a nerve but there's plaque buildup on the nerve. And so the impulse either is very delayed or never does get there. So um, I may say, for example, take a step with every intention to take a step. And as it travels, it, it, the nerve impulse travels until it gets to a spot where there's an obstacle. And so what MS is, multiple sclerosis is multiple scarring. And it can be in your brain or your spinal cord. And the, all our nerves are integrated. And uh, so it's just the impulse doesn't get through. Mm -hmm. And the the condition, um, we'll talk about the, the different types because there are a few types of this. Um, it, does it get progressively worse? In, 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 in your case, has it gotten, has that, that signal transference, for example, become harder to, to regulate for yourself? Right. Um, so I was diagnosed in 1990. And it is now 2021. I can still do everything I did except ride a two wheel bike. So I have secondary progressive, which means uh, things will get worse and are getting worse, but it's over a long, long period of time. So people in my life who uh, see it most, is my family because they only see me once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But Paul, you know, he doesn't really think, and I don't think things have changed a lot, but right. people who don't see me, they do. So uh, since you, you, you just mentioned uh, your condition, your type, uh, why don't you briefly share with us the other, I think there's three to get all together. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you share with us the other two? 
Sure. So majority of people, and I will just say that in Canada, for every four people who are diagnosed with the MS, three are women. And majority of people diagnosed with MS will start with relapsing, remitting. And mm. so you will go through life, your days, and then something will happen. And when you recover, you go back into remission and you go back to where you initially started. The sad thing about relaxing, remitting is it doesn't stay that way for your entire time with MS. And if it does, you know, you, you are one of the very, very lucky ones. Usually around the 10 year mark, people will either get uh, change to secondary progressive, which is me, things get worse, but over a super long period of time. And then the third one is primary progressive, and they miss the relaxing, remitting altogether. They will go, uh, they will be, they will face disability very quickly. I know a lady here in Grand Forks within five months of her diagnosis, she was in a wheelchair. So primary progressive is okay. the worst case scenario. And interesting, interesting that it's three out of four are women. So mm -hmm. is there any uh, rhyme or reason to this do we, that we know of? No, and that's, the question, right? So much research is going on in uh, MS, and they're no closer to finding out the cause, and they are no closer to finding a cure. They are making great gains in uh, prescription drugs that help various symptoms, uh, but with respect to what causes it, and will I ever be cured of this in my lifetime? I'm pretty hesitant. Well, I mean, you, you know, as we're going to see you, you, what you've just shared too, that, you know, you were diagnosed in 1990. That's, uh, I can do the math 31 years ago. Uh, and the only thing that's really changed is you cannot ride a two wheel bike. So in the grand scheme of things, your, um, type, if you will, uh, your condition hasn't really, um, you know, impacted your quality of life. Right. So, I was diagnosed when I was 23. So I have lived longer with MS than I have without MS. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's go back. Let's go back to that. Um, I know... I know things happen. We get signs. We, you know, we, we have something usually is, is, a, you know, a precursor to a condition like this. How did it play out for you uh, in your life back then in your, in your late teens, early twenties, what were you doing and, and so forth? Right. So from 84 to 89, I was at UBC, never experienced anything that was even close to a red flag. And then I got a job right away in September, and that was September 89, and I was a physical education teacher. And one day in uh, February, I woke up and I saw two of everything. And I had, I had no idea what it was, and MS meant nothing to me. I was lucky to get in to see my doctor. Uh, the best thing she said is, I don't really know what this is. Your optic nerve is inflamed, but I'm going to send you to somebody who can. And then it just went from ophthalmologist to an MRI to a diagnosis to the UBC MS clinic. And the double vision has never, it's still with me. So I have a prism in my lens that enables me to see properly. Um, for the first five years of teaching PE, there wasn't really 
it was really a lot, right? I was really bothered. Um, it was the sixth year that um, things started going sideways for mm -hmm. me. And I took a leave of absence from teaching and never to return to teaching PE again. And, and I was broken because that's Which, the only you, job. That was your dream job too, it, right? It you, was. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, looking up there at whoever is up there, like, give me something else. Give me diabetes. Cut off my arm. You know, but MS, really? You know? And uh, it took a long time to get where I am today and to <clears throat> realize that, you know, my mindset is what enables me to live a good life today. Yeah, you use the term broken. So, you know, we know um, part of the work that I do in, in the world with coaching and personal growth development is we, 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 we all have these series of broken moments that lead us to the next, um, you know, blooming of who we are, if you will. And, and you, while you were, you were broken that your dream job, um, which I want to share with everyone because you told me this and I just, it's, I just love the story. It was inspired from a teacher that you had when you were very young, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. It's a, I love that. You know, uh, I love when, when teachers have that profound impact on us at a young age and we never forget them, you know? Absolutely. I wanted to be just like Carol. She did her <laughs> master's in Oregon. I did my master's in Oregon. She did a PhD in Edmonton. I went to Toronto, but I still have it. So there you go. Two peas in a pod. Two peas in a pod. Um, and 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 so after the dream job somewhat ended and 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 your world caved in a little bit, uh, you did find some reprieve. You you also went on to then teach for a while. Like you weren't you weren't just throwing in the white towel and and sitting on the couch right so what was the next right. the next phase of, for you on that journey um i was at my parents and i got a call from a principal of another school asking if i'd be interested in teaching social studies at his school and that was my minor i was very comfortable in it and it was <laughs> absolutely well when can you get here um i'll see you in a month Right? I was just excited to get back into a classroom. And I taught in a portable and it had a huge window. And I kept looking out at the field and seeing these kids and these teachers. And here I am in a dress and they're wearing shorts and knee high white socks. And it, it hurt. It really, really hurt. So in 2000, I took a leave of absence to go back to the University of Toronto and pursue a PhD. Took a second leave of absence to write my thesis, and I defended it in 2005 and went on long-term disability in 2007. In seven. Hmm. So that must have been that must have been a very challenging and defining moment for you in that time period where you know you you did for all intents and purposes raise the white flag uh, and you surrendered and you went on disability. So uh, we know in, in our brief intro, I mean, here you are now, an ambassador and, and a support network for women all over Canada and and, and doing this, that's a far cry from where you were at 2007-ish. Uh, what, what was going on for you internally? Uh, I, I can only imagine there was, you know, there was also, you know, sense of self-worth, failure, uh, you know, your units of happiness were shot. 
um, you know, the, the inspiration to, to dream, like we all have the ability as a child to dream was somewhat taken away from you. Um, what was going on for you back then? Sure. Um, so my husband was a PE teacher at the high school as well. And so, you know, he'd get ready and go to work and I would get ready and go to work. And my identity was not just a teacher. My identity was I'm a physical education teacher. And two things were really important to me. And one is um, my relationship with my students and also attitude and effort. I rewarded way more than an athlete. So for example, there was a young wrestler in my class um, physically and skill wise, he was amazing. He got a C in my class because he was not polite. He treated other students in the class uh, poorly and he didn't think he had to work as hard because he was on the wrestling team. Whereas somebody in my class who showed up every day was stripped and did the best they can were rewarded for that. And, uh, it was hard to transfer that into the classroom. And so my teacher identity was all over the place. And uh, when I decided to leave teaching, I went to Toronto and Paul stayed in Maple Ridge to teach. And I really needed to do that. I needed to find who I was and I needed to rely on my skills I had to learn a new city. I had to learn how to drive on the 401. And, you know, it eventually started coming together. Um, in 2003, a job was posted for Ithaca College in Upper New York State, and I applied for it. And I was interviewed, and then I, I got a message saying we hired this guy from Oregon, we'll keep you on file, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And then seven months later, the same job was posted and I applied for it. And I got a call from uh, the chair of the department inviting me down. Hmm. And I got down there and I said, what happened? Well, this family that moved to, to New York lost uh, newborn and they went back to Oregon to be with their family. And when I applied the second time, Mary recognized my name, Bevel Aqua, and I was the only one who was brought down. And they offered me the job right after the college campus tour. And I took it. And I would do that job for free for the rest of my life. It was so awesome. And when I reapplied for it, um, they needed someone to teach statistics. And I, I'm a great teacher, James, but I can't. I still count on my fingers, so that wasn't going to work so well. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to apply for a bunch of jobs and fly all over Canada, the United States, and have fun. And I started to do that. But that the second, sorry, you didn't get the job, my the value of who I felt I was was waning because I wasn't able to get a job. So that's why I went on long-term disability in 2007 because I wasn't able to get the job. Yeah. And, and then I, I assume uh, there was a lot of uh, internal chaos happening uh, in terms of you, uh, uh, what was going on in your life, you know, the, perhaps maybe the woes me card. Cause I know I've, I've played that my self pity card for sure. in my, in my, uh, jungle event, as I call my, my, uh, dark night of the soul, uh, for you, what was that? I mean, we, personal growth, we talk dark night of the soul. Uh, you know, we, we have these defining moments. Uh, was that, was that part of it? You know, the, the full-time disability then led into this, your jungle event of kind of figuring out 
um, and, and trying to come out of that somehow? Absolutely. I, I served no purpose anymore. I had no purpose in life anymore. Mm. And I was not happy about being on long-term disability. And, and I couldn't go out during the day grocery shopping because I'd run into parents and they'd say, oh, shouldn't, shouldn't you be teaching today? I mean, I didn't want to go in it into, oh, I have MS, because I would get something like, um, oh, really? But you look so good. Really? Mm -hmm. You know? Because when you look at me, do I look like I have MS? No, mm -hmm. but if you saw me walk, you'd know something was going on. So I just had no place. And I have a friend who she's she's on my shoulder every single day and she her beliefs and setting intentions and practicing yoga and meditating so i decided you know maybe this will help me feel better about who i need to become and nothing worked and i was devastated i really was and after paul retired uh, I told him I no longer wanted to live in this community, so we totally moved to six hours away and to start again. And that was important because nobody here knew me before, right? Mm -hmm. They only knew me now. So here comes that chatty patty, the nut, right? Because I, I'm out there, right? I'm crazy and people, <laughs> what they see is what they get, right? And I, I talked to everybody. And uh, so I just started thinking about why when I'm out there with others, do I feel so good? But when I come home, I have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And I started to take a look at that. So what was happening with me when I was in the real world? Well, I felt good about who I was. I liked talking to people. People would say, my, you are so optimistic. You see the good in everything. And that tape recorder in my mind started to replay that over and over and over again. And that led me to where I am today, to be a uh, ambassador for MS, to be an MS influencer. Mm -hmm. And I am happy. It shows. I mean, energetically, you know, it. yeah, you're beaming through the screen. It's, it's beautiful. So, Patty, getting up to today, the work that you're doing, uh, I want to, I do want to just check in with one thing from that that jungle event that you were going through. Uh, Cause when we talked earlier, when I met you, you really honed in on the word acceptance. Uh, and, and we know you and I on our, on our own journeys that acceptance is a very powerful thing. Uh, it gives peace. Uh, it also gives us a permission slip with which we can move forward in life. And so how did that acceptance land for you? I did not throw my hands up and say, this is my life now and I just need to cope and get through every day, you know? And I just said, you know what, Patty, your, the emotions you feel every day, you have every right to feel them. But does it need to consume you? No, it doesn't. So what do you need to move forward? And two things, let go of my illness story, leave the past behind, mm. and give myself permission to live in the moment and be optimistic and happy about what the future is going to hold for me. So you're right, that word acceptance and permission is profound. It's critical because it's not just a sense 
it's a mindset and people could tell you, you know, whatever they want, hoping they're going to make you feel better. But James, when you're in that pit and you're trying to get out and there is no ledge to put your fingers on to haul you out yourself out of the hole, you then need to develop, we need to develop ways to just leap out of that hole and move forward. And yeah. so that's that was the only option I saw is how can I like who I am? I'm 55 years old and I had nothing to do and nothing to look forward to. Really? Really, Patty? Right? Beautiful. And Patty, you know, it's it's a beautiful reminder because that mindset is applicable to everyone. MS, no MS. Condition, no condition. Right. Um, so know, that's two a things. One is, I say all the time, before MS, I was a good person and I liked who I am. Today, I am a great person and I love who I am because I live with MS. And yeah. so... MS doesn't just stand for multiple sclerosis. It stands for mindset shift. And every single person with any sense of a challenge, an obstacle, you can do it. You can do it. You know? I love that. Find out what's that. important to you. That's right. Find out what's important. And, and, you know, there is no limitations to what we what we can do and, and we control our own happiness. And Absolutely. I think you've, you've shared with us today that it is a mindset shift. It, it truly is. Uh, you know, happiness is there and it's a state and you can walk over to the light switch and you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Power is within right. you. Right? right. So. Absolutely. And you know, is, is my life, uh, what do they say is your life? awesome or whatever, you know, no, not every single day and not every moment of every day, right? Oh. So yesterday I took the dogs down to the river to go swimming and it's sandy and I have foot drop and I fell three times, you know, then I wake up this morning and I'm kind of sore, I'm kind of sore, you know, but does right. that mean today is going to be a bad day or do I have to um, dwell on that? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Beautiful. So Patty, uh, in the few minutes that we have left, could you also just share with us the work that you're doing uh, with your, you know, your support group that you're involved with and, and some of the women that you champion here in Canada? Can you just share with us something about that? Yes. So I took a 14 day free challenge about creating a community and making a difference. And so I took this 14 day challenge and it wiped me out, <laughs> but I learned so much and I created a Facebook group for women with MS and women who support someone with MS and it's called MS stands for Mindset Shift. And I'm up to over 500 members from all over the world. Beautiful. And people ask questions. I go live. I have Q&As. It's beautiful. create polls. I leave a joke. You know, like one of the jokes is a person with MS walks into a bar and a table and a chair and a person, right? You know, we trip on cracks in the line in the sidewalk. <laughs> you know, we, it's just a, a safe place where women can just be the women. And I'm trying to get help them, empower them yeah. to be the best version of themselves. 
Beautiful. I love that. And we'll make sure that we put all your information in our show notes here so that people can find you, people that, uh, uh, women that may be looking for a support group or another support group to add to their, uh, their community. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll have the, the, the contact information for them to do so. Uh, right. I'll give you one more piece of information. Sure. I have written a chapter in a book with 20 other women from around the world. And it's about life changing and then coming out of the ashes and being empowered. And the title of the book is called Absolute Will. And uh, I read it cover to cover and I've cried and I've celebrated. It is available on the Kindle store for download and eventually we'll get the, uh, the paperback out. Perfect. If you're looking for inspiring stories, perfect. Take a look. So we'll make sure that we include that as well in the show notes for people that they can click on and maybe find out some more information. So, so that's great. And congratulations on that as well. Thank you. Uh, Patty, I just wanted to sh- say that it's a pleasure, obviously, having a conversation with you. You are a true hero. Uh, your hero within has, has uh, triumphed back in the, in, in the jungle event of your, um, your full disability moment. And now you have taken uh, a condition and uh, lived with it, championing it, uh, understanding with acceptance and permission for yourself through a mindset shift, uh, you've been able to, to really live life. And I think that's all that each of us truly wants is to feel that we lived life. And it's Absolutely. a gift, right? It's a gift. It uh, and you, you burn bright. Uh, you, you, you are a beacon for others uh, like yourself out there. And uh, thank you for sharing your story with me today. James, thank you, thank you, thank you. And by the way, has anybody told you today that you're an awesome guy? <laughs> no, actually, they haven't today. So, well, there you go. So, thank you very much. I, I accept you're that. Please take care love. of yourself. Thank you. All right, uh, everyone, mad love to the courageous out there. Stay the course, stay true to yourself. Uh, Always have that inner child next to you in everything you do in life. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Patty. You're welcome.